Hello everybody. Before I get too, too far into the second movie that I'm doing right now, which is uh, Attack with the Clones, I just wanted to do this while it's still fresh in my head. So today we will be reviewing The Phantom Menace. Um, so this is the story of Anakin Skywalker uh, and Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi. So this is the first time we've ever seen these characters. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi is Qui-Gon Jinn's Padawan learner, but he's older now, so he's basically learned all the ways of the Force and is ready to com complete his final training. And uh, this is this is the time between the Federation and the Republic. They're having a debate about trades, and the Federation is trying to take over, and they're uh, they're trying to capture. Queen, or, yeah, Queen Amidala. Let me just, I wrote down key points this time so I could remember everything. So they're trying to capture Queen Amidala. Um, and this is all taking place in Naboo. Um, then they have to go, uh, Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi end up running into a creature called Jar Jar Binks and he is a Gungan and so he takes them down to the, his underwater city to try to make a deal with them with the Gungans to help out the Republic so that they are able to win the battle between um, the Federation and the Republic but uh, the Gungan leader says that he doesn't care about what happens in Naboo. And uh, Jar Jar Binks is already in trouble with the Gungans. He's not supposed to be there. So he ends up... They end up kicking all three of them out. Give them a ship to get away. And the underwater scene is very cool because they're being chased by a fish. Oh god, I should have wrote down the name of the fish too. But they're being chased by a fish and all of a sudden this bigger fish comes out of nowhere and eats it. And then it shoots back to another scene, and then it shoots back to them underwater again. And they're being chased by an electric type fish, and then the, the other bigger fish comes out of nowhere again and eats it as well. So that was a very cool scene in the movie. And uh, then they go to Tatooine because their ship ends up being... I'm out of commission. So this is where they meet Anakin. This is where uh, Padme, which is Queen Amidala's handmaiden, and Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi meet Anakin and his mother for the very first time. And Anakin is a slave. He is building a pod racer though, and he is also the person who built C-3PO. Right now, C-3PO is just basically, you can see inside of him all, all the parts and stuff. And R2-D2, that's the first time R2-D2 and C-3PO meet, as far as I know. So anyway, um, Qui-Gon Jinn doesn't have the money for the parts, so Anakin says that he can race his pod racer against a... In the, in the races the next day to win them the prize money and the he has to beat Sabulba who Jar Jar Binks runs into in the market after Jar Jar Binks tries to steal food and ends up hitting Sabulba with it and Anakin and Sabulba get into a little altercation so then the next day when um, Anakin is going to race Sabulba Sabulba goes up to his pod racer and breaks a chunk off of it in order to try to mess Annie up in the race and Sabulba doesn't play by the rules when he's doing the pod racing he throws wrenches into the other pod racers and uh, tries to careen Annie way up into the air off the service ramp but Annie's actually able to flip the power and come back down in the race and land in front of Sabulba he ends up getting behind him again but he ends up being able to stick part of a ship into a, I guess, tube or pipe of some sort on Sebulba's ship, 
and is able to pull Sepulpa's ship apart. And then uh, Anakin ends up winning the race and getting the prize money. The slave owner who owns Anakin says that it wasn't a fair bet that Qui-Gon Jinn knew he would win. And Qui-Gon tells him that um, when you gamble, eventually you lose. So there was uh, th that also in the race. The, the Sand People are actually called Tusken Raiders, I guess. So, um... <clears throat> yeah, Tusken Raiders. And all while this is happening, uh, Darth, Darth Sid they actually call him Sidious, and I looked it up. Darth Sidious is the guy in this movie. Right now, they don't know who he is. They just know that he just wears the hood and he has an apprentice named Darth Maul. And so he sends uh, Darth Maul to Tatooine to track Princess Amidala. And he ends up finding these two Jedis and trying to get onto their ship when they're getting ready to leave. And Qui-Gon Jinn and him have the lightsaber battle outside the ship. But Qui-Gon Jinn ends up getting away. And uh, then they go back to... They go back to the Senate because Queen Amidala has to talk about what's going on and uh, try to make, try to get the Chancellor that is in there now out of power so that uh, Senator Palpatine can end up taking his spot. Actually, that's what happens is he gets elected into the spot and now he is the Chancellor. He's in power. So then, um, the control ship is the Federation's number one, uh, control ship is the big space station that the Federation has that controls all their droids. So at this point it's just droids instead of, uh, stormtroopers. Uh, the droids are like, I don't know how else, how to really describe them without just saying You'd have to look up what they look like, but they're just robots, just basic robots, and they, they have, a, the Federation has quite a few of them. So they have to go back to Naboo with the, with the Queen, after it turns out that Padme is actually the Queen, and she was just using a body double so that she was protected. And you find that out uh, when they actually go back with Jar Jar Binks. And there's nobody in the Gungan city. So he takes them to the place where the Gungans go and hide when they've been attacked. And so uh, Jar Jar Binks ends up being promoted to general. And so he ends up going to fight the droids in a huge battle there down on Earth. And... Meanwhile, up in space, the Rebel Alliance is fighting to destroy the control ship, yes. And so Anakin is told by Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi to stay in the ship. So he ends up getting lost out in the space because the ship that he's in is on autopilot. He doesn't know what to do. <laughs> And Anakin ends up being the one that destroys the control ship, and while this is all taking place, Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi have their second run-in with Darth Maul, which is probably, and honestly, this is probably my favorite lightsaber battle of all time, even just a musical track behind Darth Maul, Qui-Gon Jinn, and Obi-Wan Kenobi fighting is amazing, and Darth Maul has the double-sided lightsaber, which is probably my favorite lightsaber of all time in... Star in, in the Star Wars movies. Um, I've always been a Sith guy, so deep down I'm rooting for, I know it's probably an unpopular Star Wars opinion, or maybe it's not. I just like to see the Sith win just one, one small battle. Just, just one would be, would be something. But it seems that the, uh, the Sith Lords always end up turning, or at least the apprentices do, the Sith apprentices. Because that is one remark that uh, Yoda makes at the end of the movie after 
Darth Maul is killed, and after he's killed, Qui-Gon Jinn in the battle, because they're going through the doors and there's lasers between them. So Obi-Wan Kenobi ends up being thrown down a few levels, has to use his force to force jump back up and try to catch up with the lightsaber battle between Qui-Gon Jinn and Darth Maul, and then he ends up having to watch his Jedi Master be killed. So, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi ends up taking over the training of Anakin at the end of the movie to train him in the ways of the Force, uh, the Council, um, Yoda, and a Mace Windu seem kind of iffy about this because uh, Yoda thinks that too much fear controls Anakin due to the fact that he misses his mother and he's scared and he's just he's just a kid but they won't train him, him themselves because they say that he's too old sorry so uh yeah Anakin's too old so Obi-Wan Kenobi takes on that part and uh Obi-Wan Kenobi is actually the one that kills Darth Maul, slices him in half, giving the appearance that he's dead. It's, it's been theorized over the years that Darth Maul's still alive because he was too powerful to die just from that, but I don't know. Being sliced in half seems like a pretty big, uh, I'll have to do more research on that, but yes, being sliced in half, I don't know how many people could come back from that, but it's Star Wars, so anything is possible. Um... So then Anakin destroys the control ship, yep, they, the droids all shut down, they have their giant celebration, and that's, that's the end of the movie, I would say, yeah, I think I've described everything that happens, that's, that's my review, um, really good cast, Liam Neeson, uh, Ewan McGregor, uh, Natalie Portman, uh, this is probably the, I think the first movie I ever saw, well, no, shouldn't say that. Not the first movie I ever saw Liam Neeson in. I've seen him in many other things before Star Wars, I believe. Or at least a couple things. Which I might, uh, I know I have some Liam Neeson movies to review later on in the year. But we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, so yeah, all the, uh, this is probably, honestly, out of the prequels, my favorite movie. I know so many people hated it because of Jar Jar Binks, but... Uh, as a kid, I actually did really like this movie, um, based on the fact that Darth Maul was in it, and he's just always been a favorite character of mine since I was a kid, so what can I say? And Liam Neeson is a phenomenal actor, and that probably made this movie what it is. Um, so that is my review, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.